name's Tony Thomas, and uh, I was principal at Montague Continuing Education Centre for nine years. And my first year here was in 1986, which was the centenary year. So I had the joy of having to research the history and write it and uh, make certain that the centenary was well celebrated. This is uh, State School 2784. The, uh, the uh, government just numbered schools and then did them alphabetically at one stage. That's why Alberton is number one. So, and then from then on, they just, the number in that year, they just keep adding on. Right, and this side of the building, it, the, there used to be a veranda here, and that was taken away because the classrooms were so dark, they said. The interesting thing was they took them away and then they had to install blinds because it was too bright. But at least they can control them. The doorway here was always used as a student's entrance in my day. And that was between 86 and 94. This is the staff room now when I was here. And prior to that, this was a, uh, there was a dividing wall here. That frieze there is very old. I don't know how old, but we always very careful look after it. It's Jack and Jewel, Little Bo Peep, Popsy down on the farm, Little Miss Muffet, Wee Willy Winky, Humpty Dumpty, Little Boy Blue. So this, I would say, would have been the infant room in the old days. and. Uh, so that's been managed to remain here for ages. This is uh, the students' recreation area. Uh, again, in my day, we had a couple of pool tables that the students used to play here. But if we can get the camera to go right up to that um, person hole, I'm never calling a manhole, and the roof and that's where up to the bell tower and there used to be a rope coming down and the kids on duty used to pull the, the uh, rope and the bell would ring and it was one day they came to me and said uh, Tony there's no we can't get the bell to ring I thought that was a bit funny so I got uh, a local handyman and he had a ladder which was tall enough to go up there. He went up there and found, he said, Tony, the, uh, the bell's been stolen. Oh, I said, couldn't be. It was an old chip's bell and it weighed 60 kilograms and for them to get that on that steep roof and steal it, they must have really wanted that uh, the metal in that bell. This uh, is the what we used to call the home crafts room, and now I see it's called the healthy living centre, and that was a very important part of the, uh, the. It is a very important part of the curriculum for these students because it means that they can look after themselves um, and not have people caring for them all the time. So they're taught how to. Uh, first of all shop, what to shop for, cook and uh, properly look after things. We're now moving to the school hall and uh, it uh, was being used for many things but at one stage from 1938 it and the room next door I believe used to be part of the school that was developed for students with infantile paralysis or polio and uh, it was very important in the district that they, this uh, school was here or these rooms were here for those students. 
1913 was an important year in Victorian education history because there was a new Education Act passed. The main thing for that was to make uh, allow secondary schools in the state, but it also meant that students with disabilities, um, students with intellectual disabilities, physical disabilities, hearing and vision impairments could be educated. So in 1913, the first uh, Victorian special school for kids with intellectual disability, and that's mild intellectual disability, they began in Fitzroy. And they had students from South Melbourne going there in a horse-driven cart every day. And uh, that the uh, principal at uh, Fitzroy Special School, Porteous, he just said to the department, this is costing a lot more money than it would be if we had a teacher at Montague. Because he knew that this school was, the numbers had dropped so much. Um, and they, it really was very, very low because there are other schools around. And so they started a, an annex of Fitzroy Special School at Montague. And that lasted for many years until um, the, uh, it became a school in its own right, the, own, the second special school for kids with intellectual disability in the state, and uh, that was a very important time. A very important thing happened here in 1960 when the staff decided they really needed to get students into uh, some sort of work environment and so they uh, used, had committees and may spoke with various people, psychologists and trades hall council and people like that and eventually started work experience. This was the first school in the Victoria, it may be the first in Australia to have work experience and now it's in every secondary school in Victoria I would believe.